Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at creating this moss grain effect. Now, lots of interesting things here. I should point out, of course, that the inspiration and the technique for this project come from Andrew Kramer at videocopilot.net. So I urge you to check out his original After Effects version of this. So as you'll see, we've got this cracked wall with this sort of indented text, and then the moss grows through the cracks and then fills out the letters. And I just want to point out that we can use any text or any object here. Obviously, I've typed the word moss using the text tool, but for example, we could swap it out for this graphic object that I've made. And uh, you'll see that the the whole effect works just as well with a graphic as it does with text. So let's get started. So first of all, just a quick check on our project settings, 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second, and 10 seconds long. First of all, I want to build my group structure. So I'm going to duplicate this group a few times. So that's using Command D, but you could also use the duplicate option there. So my base group is going to be called Shape Mat. My next group is going to be called Inverted Mat. I'm going to put my shape group into the inverted mat. Next group is going to be called Shape Plus Cracks. And I'm going to put those two groups into there. And the next group is going to be called Background. And I'll put all of that into there. Then I'm going to make another group called Matted Moss, and then another group called Main Moss. And I'm going to put Matted Moss inside Main Moss. Okay, that's enough for now. We'll be making a few more later on. I'm going to turn off that Main Moss group, close it down, and let's concentrate on building our base matte object. So first of all, I'm going to come to Generators, bring in a color solid, not that colour solid, because that's the really annoying one that's one pixel by one pixel, so remove that. Don't know what Apple have decided to give us that. It's incredibly annoying. So I'm going to use that one there. Colour solid, come to the inspector. Let's make it black. OK, then let's take our text tool and type the word moss. Let's make it 480 pixels. Let's set the baseline to negative 160. Let's come to Properties and Center it up. And I also need to choose Center Alignment. OK, the, the logic of that baseline of 160 is that if you take a third of the point size and set that as the negative baseline, then it'll be lined up vertically. OK, so that's my shape mat. Next, I want to come to my inverted mat group and I want to come to Filters, Color, Negative. And that's just to invert it. And so coming up a layer to Shape and Cracks, I'm going to select Import. And then what I want to do is I want to bring in this Cracks element like that. Come over to Properties, Blend Mode, set that to Multiply. And now I've got my text and my Cracks as a, a composite item inverted, which is what I want. Then I'm going to come up to the main background layer itself come to import and I'm going to import this concrete mashup texture and then we just need to scale it up until it fits the frame so let's go for 70 and then let's duplicate it right click duplicate I want to add an image mask to this second layer and I'm going to use my shape mat as the source and I'm going to set the source channel to luminance and then we come to Properties, set this to Multiply. So with my Shape Mat selected, I just want to roughen up the edges of this text. Uh, and to do that, we are going to come to Filters, Stylize, Crystallize. We just need to set the speed down to zero because we just want this as a texture. And you can see that that's just broken up the edges of the of the text and it's it's a better, better looking result, more concrete like. So I just want to flatten off the contrast of this background a little bit too contrasty. So let's come to 
filters color, color curves. And let's just bring up the black like that. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to come to my background group and I want to import my moss texture. So moss texture tiled, import that. It's just have tiled up some, some moss to create this texture. Okay, so then what I want to do is I want to add an image mask to it. So right click, add image mask. The source for this is going to be the shape mat layer. So drag that in and set the source channel to luminance. I want to add a couple of filters to this layer. So first of all, a color curves and then a color hue saturation. So we just want to set the saturation down to nothing. And then we just want to adjust this curve so we get something like that. I think that'll do. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create some of that moss darkness already in this uh, layer. And then what we need to do is we need to come to the properties and set the blend mode to darken. And I think you can see what that's doing is just, just creating some darker patches in here. So now this multiplied layer here, which is my darkening, is a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to set that blend mode to 50 and that's looking a bit better. And so you can see how that moss texture is creating these dark patches. And that's because we want the moss to mainly look like it's growing out of the brighter patches and leave the darker patches more or less alone. But now to finalize our background, I want to add an indent filter to it. So stylize indent. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take our shape plus cracks group there and drag it into the height map. And you can see that that's now applied those cracks. And then what I need to do is I need to take this background group and I need to switch it to fixed resolution. And then it matches the uh, background map. Okay, so let's just use our indent filter to get the look we're looking for. So let's set the softness to 0.17, brightness to 0.42, Ambient down to zero, highlight brightness to 54, highlight sharpness to 37, and let's set the depth to five. And I want the light coming down from the top, so I'll set that light rotation value to 90. Just going to add a color curves to this, so color, color curves. Just want to take out a little bit of blue out of the highlights. Now I realize I've made one mistake and it's very common when you're applying uh, sources to image masks and that's I've, it's accidentally turned off the shape mat layer, shape mat group I should say. And you can see the difference there is that when it's back on, we've got this nice cutout for the text as well, not just the, not just the cracks. Okay, next let's look at creating the moss itself. So let's come to our main moss group, open that out, and let's select the matted moss group there, and let's import our moss texture again. Let's turn on this group. So what I want to do is I want to apply an image mask to this group, so add image mask, and we're going to need to use the, the shape mat. I'm just going to pin that so I can scroll down here and drag in the shape mat like that. And we need to set the source channel to luminance. So now the moss is filling the letters. Just want to add a, a crystallized filter to this to break up the edges. So stylize, crystallize. So I'm adding it to the shape mask. Again, set the speed down to nothing. I'm going to increase the size to 16 just to really break that up. Then what I'd want to do is I want to come to my main moss group and I want to add stylize indent. So let's set this up. Softness 0.5, brightness 0.5, ambient down to 0.05. And let's just turn the highlight sharpness all the way up because we don't want any bright specular highlights, that's to say. Let's set the light rotation to 90. 
and let's set the depth down to five. So now you can see how that indent filter has really turned our moss texture into something that's looking a lot more convincing. Then what we want to do is we want to find a way of getting this moss to reveal itself. So what I'm going to do is come to the top here and make a new group and I'm going to call it Reveal Mats because I want one mat for the letters and a different one for the cracks. And to do that, I'm going to add generators clouds. And so we're going to set the speed down to zero. What we're going to do is we're going to add these two color tabs to a rig so we can control them together as one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Object New Rig and I'm going to add a slider. And I'm going to call this Main. And then come back down to my clouds here. Click on the white tab there and come down to Location and drag it to the rig. Click on the black tab, add that location to the rig. Now, the larger of those two numbers, I'm going to set to 100 and the smaller I'm going to set to 95. Then I'm going to move to my 100% position there. The smaller value I'm going to set to zero and the larger value I'm going to set to five. And now if we adjust that, you can see how we've got this really nice growing mat like that. And that's exactly what's going to give us this, this nice growing effect. So let's turn off the reveal mats group because we don't need that. Let's call this a reveal main, that clouds generator, so we know what it is. And then I'm going to come into my main moss group. I'm going to select the moss texture and I'm going to add an image mask. And the image mask is going to be that reveal main. So drag that into there and set the source channel to luminance. And now you can see that if I adjust my slider there, we can use it to animate on the moss. So I just want to do two extra things to this clouds generator. I want to add a levels filter, so color levels, and I also want to add another crystallize. Turn the crystallize speed down to zero. And what we're going to do with the levels is we're just going to bring the black and white values together to around that point. And I think if I zoom in a bit, hopefully you can see that it, what it's doing is it's just sharpening up the edge. You can see it there more clearly. And the crystallize is just helping to break up the smooth edges of that, of that clouds generator, give us something a little bit more organic. OK, now we can move on to creating our moss for the cracks, which is a little bit more interesting. So to do that, I'm going to just duplicate this main moss group. Right click duplicate and let's call it cracks moss. So what we need to do here is we need to swap out this image mask. Instead of using the shape mat, we're going to use the cracks image. So I'm just going to pin that, come down and find the where well, we a high contrast cracks, drag that into the mask source there. And what we need to do is do the opposite of what we've got here. And so set the mask blend mode to subtract. So we need to remember to turn back on the elements that we forgot we've accidentally turned off. So the shape mat and the high contrast cracks there. Let's just lock them just in case we do that again. OK, so if I turn off my main moss, you can see how this set of moss is growing just out of the cracks. And that's because we've added this mask specifically for that purpose. Now, the crystallize on this image mask is actually doing quite a nice job. As you see, it's spreading the moss out beyond the edges of the crack. If we just wanted it inside the crack, we'd probably stick with that. But I quite like the way it's spreading out a bit. Uh, maybe reduce that value down to about 12, possibly. And then I'm also going to add a color levels. And then if I bring the black value up like that, you'll see how that increases the intensity of that quite a bit. 
and so we can play with that to get as much moss as we want in those cracks. Now, we also obviously need to animate on the moss in a slightly different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this uh, Reveal Mats group, and I'm going to duplicate that Reveal Main, and I call it Reveal Cracks. Again, we need to add these values to a rig, or to a slider rather. So come to the rig, add a new slider, call this one Cracks, come back to our Reveal Cracks mat, and then select the white value, drag its location to there, to our Crack slider, select the black value, drag its location to our Crack slider. And again, we'll just set this up in the same way we did before. So our upper value 100, our lower value 95, come to the other end, our lower value 0, and our upper value 5. So now if we drag this Reveal Cracks to the image mask here for the moss texture in that Cracks group, we can see that animating that slider brings on the moss in the Cracks. And the good thing about that is that we can bring it on sooner than we bring on the main moss in the in the in the letters so next let's set up the animation so first of all let's come to the first frame let's set a keyframe let's enter a value of zero let's come to five seconds on the timeline and let's set that value to 100 and that looks like this So then we can do the same thing for our letters, just with different timings. So let's just close up our cracks moss and turn back on our main moss here. Let's select our slider for the main moss. Let's come to the start of the project, set a keyframe, set that value as zero, then come to seven seconds on the timeline and set that value as 100. So now the cracks moss is growing faster than the main letter moss, and that's quite a nice effect. So all I really need to do now is to set up some lighting and a camera. First of all, right at the top here, I'm going to make a new group. I'm going to call it all and then I'm going to make a new group above that and call this master. And I'm going to set that group to 3D, move all into master. Let's close it down our rig and move it out of the way. And then let's close up everything else, grab it like that, including our reveal mats group. So literally all those groups that we made, stick them into all and then close that up. And then what we can do is we can add object light. I'm going to have an intensity of 300 and a fall off of two. And then open up its position. I'm going to set its Z position to 400 and its Y position to 540. Giving this nice downward lighting. And I think what I'd like to do is set up another light. So add object light. I just want to give this one just a small amount of yellow in it. And then what I want to do is I want to animate its intensity. So it grows from the beginning to the end. So let's come to the beginning, set the intensity to zero, come to the end and set the intensity to a hundred. So what we're getting is this nice sort of warming up effect as the animation goes on. And I also just want to animate the original light come to its Z position, come to the start, set that value to 100, and then come to, I don't know, about a second, and set it to 400. And that way we get this sort of nice brightening up effect at the beginning. And then we can just add a camera, add a behavior camera dolly, and let's just set that value to one, two, five, and there you go.
So as I say, we're not limited to just using text. Let's just prove once again that we can come into our mat group right at the bottom there. Here in our shape group, I'm just going to import again our logo shape. Just scale that up, rotate it. And again, you'll see that it all works just perfectly just by swapping out the, the shape like that. Just to prove we can do it with the text as well. Let's type test and you'll see that works as well. So it's all fully procedural, makes it very easy to, uh, to customize. Okay, thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope that was interesting. Hope to see you again another time.